the end of the Second World War, the Atomic Energy Commission was created to foster and develop all atomic energy activities in the United States. In 1947, it took over the atomic energy program from the U.S. Army's Manhattan Project. Its first headquarters was located at 19th and Constitution Avenue Northwest in the District of Columbia. However, as Cold War threats magnified, it became clear that the AEC was vulnerable remaining in the nation's capital. In 1957, President Eisenhower was on hand to dedicate the Atomic Energy Commission's new headquarters in Germantown. This move out of the city was inspired by an event eight years earlier. Terry Fainer, senior historian at the Department of Energy, explains. It goes all the way back to 1949, the end of August 1949, the Soviet Union uh, exploded uh, their first atomic bomb and immediately the commissioners were concerned that if there was an attack on Washington that the whole uh, headquarters infrastructure would be destroyed and there would be no way to direct and run the, uh, the facilities that were out in the field. Scientists estimated that 20 miles outside of the city was sufficiently far away to protect a relocated AEC. Clarence Hickey is an environmental scientist with the Department of Energy and has researched the history and ecology of the Germantown site. And they studied 50 different sites in uh, Virginia and Maryland and then found one in Germantown, Maryland that they liked. It was a farmland site at the junction of Maryland Route 118, Germantown Road, and then US, Highway US 240, which is now the site of Interstate 270. And at that intersection of 118 and 240 was a 109 acre parcel of land that the Atomic Energy Commission thought would suit their purposes. It was far enough away, it was 20 miles, I think, as the crow flies, or as the bomb blast moves. It was at an elevation of about 500 feet above mean sea level, considerably higher than Washington, D.C. And with U.S. 240 being nearby, they had access to Washington for their normal daily business. And there were, were small towns nearby that provided the infrastructure that was needed. And with all the approvals, they proceeded to uh, purchase the site. Much thought went into creating a structure that would be secure. And the building itself was designed uh, with steel reinforced concrete and faced north-south. And rather than being a tall building, it was a low, spread out building, uh, four stories with uh, lots of corridors and hallways and wings. And so this was a, a low flat building north-south. And if a bomb were to be dropped in Washington and the blast were to come out as far as Germantown, the south end of the building would receive the blast and, and, and absorb the shock so that the north end of the building would be more or less protected. And it was that north end of the building facing uh, Maryland Route 118, Germantown Road, where the AEC commissioners and, and all the uh, presidential appointees and, and people were located, it's where their offices were. The basement doubled as a bomb shelter. If there was ever an attack, this is where the nearly 1,600 employees would have evacuated. And there were um, blast resistant, huge blast resistant doors, which were several feet thick, at, in the stairwells and at the at any entrances there were in the, uh, into the, the mini-winged building. Um, and as we look at this floor plan now, um, you can see here's the technical library, record center is here, but certain areas of the building were designated as uh, shelter areas. There's a shelter area here, and in, in A wing there's a shelter area here, and another shelter area here. And I think what they did is they stored equipment and supplies and that sort of thing and, and actually some living space if people needed to spend any significant amount of time down there. Um, if there was a disaster, the health unit, which had a door right here opening out, would be the main entrance to the whole bomb shelter unit. And they had several restrooms in here which they uh, which could be converted to decontamination areas in case somebody came in from the outside and, with, and there was radiation in the outside and uh, they needed to be decontaminated. 
Merrill Schindel runs an in-house barber shop at the DOE. He's been there since 1959 when it was still the Atomic Energy Commission. He remembers the evacuation drills. They had big blast doors right inside by the elevators there. And when they would uh, they'd start the evacuation, you had to go in behind the blast doors and they would seal the whole area in there. There's, there was about four or five big blast doors. And they were, they were real, they were really big doors, heavy doors. And they would all slam shut. You'd have to stay in there about five minutes and then they'd open them up. Well, this was a pretty safe place down here. You know, these walls are pretty thick. And this is a pretty safe place down here. You'd take practically a direct hit to uh, <clears throat> move anything down here. Today, this building houses the Department of Energy. The evacuation drills are a thing of the past. The shelter areas are now offices. But the building itself still looks like it did when it first opened in 1957. The sign in front of the gift shop still reads AEC. Created as a convenience to the employees, this store even has a post office. Carol and Sanford Blum have been the managers since 1963. In the early days, the AEC was a small, like a small college campus. Everybody knew everybody. It was very close-knit. And uh, we were the only game in town because when we first moved here, there were there was no German town. It was farmland. Fairchild had a building across the way where they landed airplanes, but it had really no effect on this building. So in order for people to enjoy the fruits of getting out of their office and seeing something new, they came down to the gift shop. And that's the part that we played. Hi, isn't that pretty? Everyone in this building is just a pleasure to work with. They. Um, can't do enough to keep us here, and they, uh, it, it's just been a pleasant experience. It's very different than having a store in a downtown area or a shopping mall, because it's a constant change in your customers there, whereas here you get to know them well. The AEC came to Montgomery County for national reasons. Once here, it became a place where national history and local history intersect. Important scientific discoveries have been made here, important people have visited here, and its presence here helped initiate the growth and development of Upper Montgomery County.